Hey guys, we're out here. It's early in the season. Um, we're, you know, first, second week of April here and yeah, excited to take on this river. Water's low and clear, hey? Yeah, and, and it's funny because for a couple that uh, has been around Alberta and has well published Alberta Fish and Guide magazine, host of the Fly Fish Alberta Forum, you know, we haven't explored everything in the province and we've not done that deliberately. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like when we pick off in New Zealand, we go, go, go. We've deliberately not gone certain places in New Zealand. Well, the same is true here. And the reason for that is once you know, you know. And if you know everything or if you've been everywhere, it takes away from the exploration. Yeah, the enjoyment of the exploration. And we, you know, we like to be able to pick off certain places that we haven't been just to actually go and enjoy those like, yeah. later in life, you know. And, exactly. And so here we are. Yeah, this is, <laughs> it's kind of funny that we've not fished this, you know, bit of water, but here we are. And the reason we're doing it now is because it's been cold the last week, uh, real cold up top in the Alpine. And it's, you know, mid-April, anything can happen. We've got uh, real warm weather coming in, bright and sunny. Today's going to be, what, maybe 15 Celsius, which doesn't sound warm. But in the next few days, 20 above, we want to fish this one before the Alpine starts, you know, raising water levels with snowpack melt, that kind of thing. And just hit it right now and see what we can do yeah and focus on the deeper water you know still fish are still in those overwintering pools so absolutely. that's i'm sure where we'll be focusing pools and, well, and, troughs yeah. and, and we've got a, a guys over here doing a tv show so they're going to be in the same bit another truck just pulled up in behind us and i saw another one coming so that's you know that's a lot of people <laughs> for essentially a dozen wintering pools but ah, we'll see this is more just go and see the beautiful landscape and uh, see if we can't sight a couple fish to nymph up Maybe we get a, a, a mayflies, maybe stoneflies is more the point. Stoneflies and midges and go for a, a walk in, in, in some beautiful countryside. Stunning day. It is. Yeah, it's so funny we haven't ever fished here. You know, for everything that we've fished, yeah. but not here. Not here. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love leaving spots. It, it is there's a level of unknown you know sure it's, it's close to us and yeah you know it's popular but hey you know that's gorgeous hey that color just stunning wow like all the different browns yeah. throughout this you know yeah. no we parked at alberta conservation association uh little conservation site there and you know they do a lot of great stuff to provide public access and I've just put little places like that aside. It's obviously conservation sites, but also access to ensure, you know, anglers have access to, to these waters. It's been, it's been a long process of establishing sites where they're kind of confined so people don't roam all over rangeland. And really that's taken a lot, a lot of work through the decades to establish those things. And it's, it's great to see, and hopefully that continues, you know, as long as we respect the, the adjacent farmlands and treat the facilities good, it's, it's, a, it's a really good thing. Really grateful for it, you know? Yeah, otherwise we'd be walking an extra mile or two from the river, uh, the bridge up the highway. Oh, I love this stuff. Yeah, anybody in the backwater here? Always got to look. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's one right there, see him? Awesome. He, he saw us. In. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's hopeful. He's underneath the ice over there. But yeah, no, that's <laughs> seriously hopeful. So Dave's up high on this cliff bank and uh, he's just picked up 
that there's a school of fish right in behind in this bucket of water in behind this big boulder. So I'm going to end up switching up for my heavy nymphs and I'm going to end up putting on um, just kind of a stone pattern, um, kind of a gray stone pattern we have and then a couple feet down to probably just about a size uh, 14 um, little, again, copper tail nymph, very basic pheasant tail nymph. So Dave just voiced that there's a few fish that have just risen a few times, which is promising. And I'm going to end up starting to go with just the dry because I just saw that. Yeah. Saw that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's up above these ones at the back end, right? Yeah. He's on that shelf, eh? Yeah. Uh, three of the rod length below that rock. Oh, that's a... Ignore that one and come okay. Too far. No. Oh. Oh, I think I had a look. I had a look. I had a look. So I've just finished putting on a little dropper nymph again, about two feet below my dry, and I'm going to give that a go. There we go. Nice on the dry. That was gorgeous. The casts. Here you go. There we go. Nice on the drop. Nice rainbow. Yeah, he's not gonna let me uh, just slowly bring him out. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> right on, man. That was a gorgeous eat. He came right up from this side of the rock shelf. Yeah. Yep. That's a pretty looking fish from what I can see, color wise. Funny, eh? Right when you go to put on a nymph and he takes the dry. Beautiful. Just stunning colors. <laughs> Sweet. Really pretty fish. Well, turns out it was a cut bow, some gorgeous colors here. So we've seen a fish that's about a rod length just above this, this boulder here. No, I think I have the fish, Dave, now. I had it right in here. Here it comes. Not, not a huge guy, but really pretty and beautiful, right? Took the nymph. Absolutely. Here you go. <laughs> nice well, let's go see what else I can catch in this amazing overwintering pool behind this boulder. Absolutely stunning water. So what you seeing now? To the left of the white rock. Okay. Okay. That's where I'm gonna aim. Okay, nice long pause. Let line extend above you. Pause and place. And should be coming over a fish right in there. Yep, there it is. Needed the depth. That was all about the depth, hey? Awesome. That's the one, love. Yeah. Looks like a good looking rainbow. Might be about the same as the other two, though. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Quite substantially. I want to say they're suckers. I think so. Yeah, look at them go. <laughs> wow. Yeah, they all seem to be similar size, these trout in this particular pocket anyway. So all I did with that fish is um, I actually tied on another piece of uh, 4X tippet about 
I'd say, because I've got 4X, 4X to my first nymph, and I decided to just put on another about 8 to 10 inches of 4X down to uh, another hair's ear nymph I had. And that was just simply because all I needed was depth. There we go, keep his head up. Keep, still keep his head up, no. Get that head up, keep it up, keep it up, and skip it in, nice. Yeah, beautiful fish, a little longer, really pretty. When you find a pool, it's an overwintering pool and hey, you gotta work it. That's exactly what we've been doing, but I knew covering those fish a few times with just simply my two foot uh, dropper nymph wasn't gonna cut it, had to go deeper. That is gorgeous, eh? That big bowl just sitting there on the inside like that. Okay, so in these conditions, this is exactly why we wanted to come today after a cold snap. That high country is frozen. As you see the bright white, well, it's not melted. This river's low and clear and gorgeous. Uh, across from us and the tail out on the other side of the bowl is just nothing but white fish and rainbows and cuts stacked up on the bottom. Ooh, that one, one just rose. Really good rise, yeah. yeah. And on this side, just down here, it's deceiving on sizes, you know, but it looks like a big New Zealand brown. Um, it, it's, it, this bull trout is in the, the exact same spot as a New Zealand brown would be in that subtle, gentle water, just like a big apex predator would be. And that's a big bull trout. I don't know. It, it, I couldn't even begin to guess. Five to seven pounds, probably. Yeah. And I'm going to go at it with a pair of streamers just to, you know just recently we were casting this kind of spun deer head bugger and this olive woolly bugger to brown trout y'all guess what we're gonna do with this guy the water's low and clear i could probably try chucking a big ass articulated streamer at it uh, I'm, I'm using a nine foot five weight with a double taper floating line nine foot leader so i you know i, I want to i brought that for dries and droppers and maybe a little bit of nymphing today um, hoping for the stonefly hatch, but I also knew that I was going to run into this. So I'm just going to do the nine foot leader. Uh, I'm going to end up putting a couple splitties at the head of that thing. This is a tungsten bead on this. I'm going to go down and I'm going to get low and I'm going to cast out because it's a big back eddy. And I'm going to cast at that angle, let it sink and let that, that current like that and try to swing these flies right to its nose. The reason I'm going small is because if I use a big fly, it's either gonna, it'll charge and eat it, and that'll be it, and I either hit it or miss it, but I want the certainty of a smaller fly and see if I can get a, a hook up on these. You know, if this guy doesn't eat my streamer, I might just end up going at him with the big pheasant tail. Yeah, that makes sense, that large nymph, hey? Yeah, we'll see. Always gotta be hopeful, but. Absolutely. In theory, I should be able to get pretty close to this guy. Yeah, I think you should. I'm trusting that it's a bull trout, and that it's not going to be too spooky. Okay, so the two little buggers did not work. So now, I've got my splitties and a big kind of white streamer articulated. And I'm just going to get it wet to start with. Hopefully that'll drop into place. And I can see them right there. We'll just have a good go here. And I completely going the wrong way, but at least now I can see the thing. It's that big white strippy do. And I'm just going to bring it right across his nose here. I don't think he's chasing. <laughs> I just don't see him chasing today. All right, so the big white streamer didn't work the tandem streamers didn't work and while I was retying my flies here this guy went for a swim and now I've just got a size I don't know six pheasant tail nymph make it ugly make it heavy built in I don't want to go too deep on the fly itself so that's why I got rid of the splitties but this guy is tied with a couple <laughs> a couple wraps for sure and this guy looks active now so i'm just going to put it right here let's see if he charges at this i'm hoping that he thinks that's a stonefly nymph and i'm hoping to see that big white mouth hmm. 
Got him right there. Just saw his mouth flinch. Oh, come on. That's a big fish, but, and he just cocked his mouth and ate it. And people wonder, hey, why don't you guys fish for big bull trout? Well, that's why. Through the years, I've taken heat online for not being a fan of catching Alberta bull trout. I hadn't targeted one in 15 years, and this is why. If you find one and are persistent, you'll catch it. Given the severe habitat issues here in Alberta throughout bull trout range, as well as the sheer number of people targeting the few larger fish present, combined with the political system that pits our biologists against politicians that perpetually expand oil and gas, forestry, agriculture, and more recently coal mining, these native fish that are so easily targeted don't have much chance to re-establish their populations. Given how heavily involved I've been in Alberta's fisheries politics for 25 years, to catch one just brings so many such issues to the forefront for me. So if I sounded underwhelmed catching this bull trout, I was. It's a gorgeous fish, and I was thrilled it was there, and to have a go at one for the first time in so long, but it will also likely be my last for some time, for all the same reasons. So that's exactly why we came here today. Um, big old bull trout in a great spot. You know, it, 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 the difference between a bull trout in, in these waters in Canada and a big brown sitting in the exact, the same spot. So apex predators, same spot, soft water, out of the current. Um, you know, if, if there's not a lot of food happening in the system, New Zealand, Alberta, that fish is gonna sit there in that kind of soft water where they can just go, yeah, I'm gonna wait until food comes to me, until something exciting happens. And, well, they're always in that spot. So that's why we got a, on a day like this, get here, we're walking down, it was like, you know what, if we use the light coming in like a beacon on this spot right here, we can get up on the cliff here and look in. We get up there, and it was like, yeah, there. And I had a hunch it was going to come down to the big pheasant tail, the big stonefly nymph, because the water is really cold. It was minus 10 up top last night. And that usually spells not much happening. So it was like, well, you can put your streamers through, put your streamers through. I didn't think he was going to do much. But a little stonefly nymph, a size 6 pheasant tail, uh, kind of triply lead wrap, guess what's going to do the trick every time. And I think it was just standing up here. The fish had taken off and chased something else. You know, I thought it, I saw it chase a rainbow out in the middle there, and it came back in. And it was like I was already here. Now it's just one, two, three flips, get the right depth, get whatnot, put it right beside his head, and it just went like that. And it was like awesome. Uh, so it, it's kind of it's predictable as, but it, it's fun. Uh, gorgeous fish, and unless we see a bull trout doing something else for the rest of the day, I think we'll just avoid them because. They're, you know, they're the kind of fish that they sit there and you just feed them and feed them and feed them. That's generally what's going to happen. Really cool, but at the same time, um, you know, hopefully we'll see some more rising fish further down. Okay, so here we go. Um, again, because it's early spring, these fish are going to be in the relaxed deep stuff and we'll see if we can get anybody to move just using a kind of a beetle with two nymphs below it and I'm not really counting on much because it's all slabby rock and I'm just going to try to bring this set of flies down right down the middle of the trough that might have been a fish right there you know getting old now can't see much <laughs> oh, rise right here. Oh, really? Yeah. Right off that bone line? Yeah, you ready? Yeah, yeah, okay, here we go. Right in there. Oh, he missed the beetle, eh? He came up to eat the beetle and he missed it. Yeah. Wasn't a big fish, you know, 15 or so. You go, yeah, it'd be nice to. Be nice to go methodically but because the wind is howling through here right now we're just going to go at this one fish that's rising and well rising active how about that it's risen about i don't know five times in the last 20 minutes and we're just going to have a go at it i'm going to go straight at it 
and I'm, there's a fish, active fish over here as well, off my right. Normally I wouldn't do this, but because I want to dry fly fish and because Amelia wants to zoom in on a fish, we're going to go at this fish. And given how the wind is cooking again today, we may as well try to get that done first. How far up? Okay. No, not yet. How close am I getting? Okay, I think I see him. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Right up in there. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, I've lost him to glare. I gotta back up. Oh, there he is. I finally can see him. That'll be two of them. Just, just a sipping rise, eh? Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay, so this guy is the same fish I stuck, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. Caught a fish in between. And he's active, but he's not. He took off and then he came back. So I've got about a two and a half foot dropper on 5X. Um, basically just a small pheasant tail with a copper crystal flash uh, tail on it. And I'm just gonna wait for that wind. Okay, love, ready? And that's a little bit shy, but he might take it. See what he does with that. Comes over, that's a couple of feet shy. No, that's right on him. I just saw the flash, the turn. And then my, yeah, I knew I was late and my, uh, my drive just kind of paused at about a second and a half after I saw the fish's action. I, I didn't think my, my nymph was where my nymph was. Yeah, as soon as he rises again, I'll just pop it over there and see if he wants this lighter fly. If we can go 30 seconds without a wind gust, it would be spectacular, you know? So right now I've gone to an 11 foot leader uh, to 4X. A little poly wing stimulator pattern about a size 12. There's a fish right here. Right and I'm going right here. Okay, where's that fly? There it is. Right in the zone. Just going through. Will he come up? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Just had to go a little smaller, a little lighter, and just kind of work the work this edge of that. And I think that's a little cutthroat, if I'm not mistaken. Right in there. Oh, it's a gorgeous little cut. Absolutely gorgeous little cutthroat. Oh, Beautiful. Yeah. Gorgeous fish. Let's go see three real quick. Okay. Okay, so keep going up this trough here. And there was another little rise just up in here. Let's see where that goes. Oh, I just see my dry. Let's see if anybody wants to eat my dropper. Or my dry, because you know. Okay, you ready? Okay, right there. He's not big, but let's see if I can get somebody here. <laughs> right in there if he's going to eat my dry. But he ate my nymph instead. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. There we go. Yeah, that's a little guy. Nice little gorgeous little cut again. Beautiful. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Just cool. beautiful. Okay, let's... Okay. You ready, love? Okay. There's a gorgeous little cutty. Eh? 